I'm gonna start. Uh, so, the, there we are. No, it's not fun yet. This is the boring part. It can be both. It's maybe a zero, maybe an O. You'll have to check it out. Yeah, it's a zero. Uh, so this is a talk called KDE, A Thousand Nerds Arguing Wildly. Like you notice, we're not that many here. Uh, whether that's because Lydia scared them all away with her threats of violence, or if it was we were missed in the little application that they made, I don't know. It's going to be fine. Uh, this talk comes with a few rules. First of all, my name is Jan Sreitberg, as you, most of you know. I'm in the KDE Design Group. Uh, and I'm also very agoraphobic. I always say this in front of all talks, that I may freak out, I may piss myself, shit myself, punch someone in the front row, uh, and then... <laughs> yeah, yeah, brilliant. Uh, and Lydia is here to make sure that I get driven off to hospital, if that happens, or if she managed to read my notes, which I have hidden here. Uh, this is not a keynote, because keynotes are boring, uh, or a keynote with me would be boring. It's a conversation with a K. It's a conversation on Reddit. And that is because I want to keep with the theme of the talk, which is a thousand nerds arguing wildly. And the theme will be expressed by your possibility to vote, upvote or downvote. And if you like something I say, you raise your thumb up and scream yes or yay. And if you don't like something I say, you put a, give a thumbs down and scream boo. Uh, if you have questions, you can raise your hands and scream them out. Or better, go to this address, which is a uh, Reddit thread on the KDE Reddit, and write something down. Lydia will read it, and then tell me the question whenever. Whenever I have a pause in discussions, that's the perfect situation. Uh, Lydia will ensure that you vote, will get heard, she will count the yays and boos, and if there's too many boos, I'll try to switch topic. So you have a chance to influence whatever I'm saying. All right? And before we start, I want to try, can we g just give like uh, a down vote, a boo? boo? More thumbs, boo, more and louder, please. <laughs> That's brilliant to have on a video, by the way. Like, oh, check the keynote, the boo. We have to do a clip of that. Okay. <laughs> this is not 1984. This is not the hate hour. Just wait. Wait. Give me a second. Let's about, at least talk about it. Uh, so. There we are. <clears throat> Whenever I introduce myself on these things, I mention that I am an illustrator before I mentioned that I'm a designer, because that's where I come from. I'm a, the, the illustrator first and foremost, right? And the reason I do that is because, and this might be a horrible thing to say because there's designers in the crowd, uh, is that I don't like designers very much. Uh, at all, to be quite honest. Um, so designers have a thing. There's a very specific class of designer which believes that everything this guy made ever is the best thing that has ever been made ever, 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 ever. And they always do the same weird story, which is a story about when Steve Jobs uh, walked in on a planning meeting for a CD or DVD burner application. And they, it always starts up the same way, right? So they were making, in 2000, they were making a DVD application, a burner for uh, DVDs. And they had been working with this for three weeks. They've been doing this one thing. Like there was a group of people, they've done this DVD burner thing, they worked on it, they've done research, they've sort of played around with the science, they've done everything. And they're supposed to have this meeting with Steve Jobs, and Steve Jobs walks in, and the story goes that he drew a square on the whiteboard, he loved whiteboards, and said, this is a box, you drop the file in the box, and click burn, and then it's done. This is what we're gonna do, and then he left. And designers always go, oh my god, that's so brilliant, what a genius. And all I can think of, all I've always been able to think of at those moments is, what happened with those guys? Like the guys who just worked for weeks and weeks and weeks about like, 
what are we going to do? We're going to do this thing. Oh, it's going to be a DVD player. And then this man walks in and changed everything, and they have to fix it. That's why I don't like this guy. And it's a common theme with KDE, with us, specifically for those of us in the visual design group or the design group, depending on how you want to say it, is that we often get told, like, we need more design, more designing, make more designing. Uh, and they want us to sort of be bossy and go in and sort of go, right, this is what we're going to do. You're going to do that. You're going to do that. It's going to be awesome. We're going to be brilliant together. And they want that sort of bossy attitude, like they want that glorified dictator. And we can't be that. And this talk will sort of talk about why we can't have that sort of bossiness. Why we are a thousand nerds arguing wildly and angrily. And why that can be an actually good thing. And when people want us to be more like Steve Jobs and want KDE to be more like Apple and be more designy, be a little bit more flashy, I'm always sort of thinking that, <laughs> my God, it would be a monster. And we wouldn't be able to do that either because we can't be bossy. We should be bossy. We're not good at it. It would probably be this. That's, that's, that's my image of the future if that came to be. A uh, happily, insanely screaming conky <laughs> clutching its own shit. Not a pretty sight. Uh, like I said, we can't be Steve Jobs, right? Because we are angry nerds. We're frustrated. We do our own thing. We sort of play around with stupid ideas. Some of us hate what half of us are doing, and the other half don't care. And that can be a really, really awesome idea if we embrace it properly. And one of the reasons we can't deal, and we, one of the reasons why it's good, by the way, is that structures and that level of hierarchy needed, it first of all wouldn't work, like I said, because imagine it, imagine me stepping up to say, Alex, right? And I tell Alex, Alex, stop what you're doing right now uh, and program this thing this amazing thing, what would happen in Alex or anyone else in this room if someone came up to you and told you, no, 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 you're not going to do the thing you love, you're going to do the thing I love, and you're going to do it now. The probable thing would be the infamous NVIDIA salute. <laughs> and we'd see it like that. We're like, no, I'm not going to do it, I'm going to do something else, and goodbye. We're going to lose people quickly if we start doing that. And that's one of the counter-arguments really towards that. Because the point with having this, this really thick structure, a hierarchy of people, a boss who has a boss beneath him or her, who has a boss beneath him or her, and they all get to decide things. The, the cool thing with hierarchies is that it's efficient. Like you get a unified design, you get everything is released really quickly. The downside is that it lacks all of the things that we have currently, but don't see. Because again, we're angry nerds. We don't sort of appreciate the fact that we're angry nerds. Uh, hierarchies is efficient but doomed, is sort of my point. And I don't want to use Steve Jobs and Apple because it's talking ill of the dead. But it's sort of remarkable that the second the boss disappeared, it all just fell down like a house of cards. All the fanboys and fangirls went, this is horrible, and sort of tried to raise a seance or something. And it didn't work. And the reason for that is because of that strict chain that we don't have. Again, I want to focus, this is what we don't have, but many of us really want. And I want to sort of emphasize why this is so important, that we don't have it. And how important it is that we embrace what we do have, the angry, the nerdy, the sad. And there are many reasons why a strict hierarchy is sort of crud. And it's obvious. I mean, it's here. Uh, and it's that clear path of power or absolute trust. And that's the main key with hierarchies, is that if you don't have, if I don't have complete control over you, if I can't fire you or throw you out the room, then there's no reason for you to obey me, right? All you can do is trust me. And trust is almost impossible to build. It's really easy for me to go, well, I own the company, so trust. Trust me. Trust me really quick. Come on, come on. Chop, chop. And we're sitting there going like, okay, okay, I'll, I'm, tr I'm trusting you. You're apparently very rich. That's fine. And then we sort of move along with it. But trust doesn't work like that. Trust is something that you build bit by bit. And it's incredibly easy to lose. Sorry. Um, 
it's insanely quick to lose. And if you move, remove any part of the chain as well, because it's not just everyone trusting the boss, it is trusting the boss that is above you, who trusts the boss above you, and you have to do the same, and up and up and up and up, until you get the person making all the decisions. And if that chain is broken at any point, it's lost, it's meaningless. And I know, like, like I said, this is not criticism towards KDE because we don't have it, but I just want to emphasize this before I keep talking about it because it's such a relevant topic to us. Because many of us, we always believe that it's going to be some person coming in the door going like, I'm the new savior, and then starts telling people what to do and it's going to be great. Because in our mind, we think we're the smartest in the room, right? So we think that obviously this sort of benevolent dictator will think exactly like me. It's going to be great. But it's not going to be like that. Half of the things he or she says, it's going to be the opposite. The other part of this is what we do have, which is self-organization. And that's tricky. And we all know it's tricky. I know everyone, I'm sure everyone in this room have one of those stories from KDE, like that, that moment that happened where everything just went to crud. And if we all sat down and argued about something, I'm, I'm looking at Thomas Pfeiffer specifically because we can argue until the cows come home and nothing happens. And that's, that's bad, obviously, because everything takes twice as long. There's no real direction. Arguments just keep going on and on and on and debates are the easiest thing to have. It's easy to get trust because at a certain point you know that, say, uh, Lydia, I know that Lydia is doing her thing. I can see the thing that she's doing, sitting there. And she can see my thing that I'm doing here, panicking. And together we can sort of trust the fact that we're doing our own bit, right? We don't have to trust each other, but it's easier because we can spot what everyone is doing. Uh, it doesn't automatically mean, though, that we share the same goal, me and Lydia. Lydia might be currently thinking about plot plotting my murder. And obviously, I am doing the same thing, but the opposite, plotting her murder. So, you know, like, direction is easily lost, is easily fuddled away, and debates just tend to drown everything out. It demands way more social working to function, and this is one of the things I've talked about with individuals a lot. This is actually a key point that we always miss. And I, again, it's because we're nerds. We tend to be a little socially, socially awkward at times, and we don't ask those questions. There's uh, uh, one person that I talked to who was not feeling that great, but no one had really asked why this person didn't feel that great. They just assumed that, oh, if this person isn't telling, then I'm not gonna bother you, I'm, I don't wanna prod, I don't wanna be the person who sort of just goes in and, hey, hey, tell me all your problems. But we need that, we need that social glue, and we tend to forget it. And it can also be part of an, a greater organization as well. The fact that we do social things together, not just coding, not just talking about this, but talking about ourselves, talking about, uh, asking questions about other members in KDE, how are you doing, are you everything okay, not taking, yeah, yeah, everything is fine for an answer, or uh, just asking further and further questions. We need to do that more for this to function, but we're sort of there, but this is the complaints about self-organization that we have, and everyone must feel comfortable in their role, which I think we can safely say neither of us do, right? Brilliant. So we've messed that one up. The cool thing, though, is the, cool, the coolest thing about both methods, no matter what we choose. Oh, obviously, I'm sided with self-organization. That's, some of you might not be, it doesn't matter. But one of the main, main points that we have to do in KDE more, way, way, way more, no matter what method we use, is inspiration. And we tend to fuddle this ball, we tend to drop it easily, because we tend to do, oh, I wrote a blog post about the technical thing I did, and no one got it, but that's fine. Like, we, we just mention it. What we need to do is inspire people to do things. And this is a constant conversation that I'm mentioning Thomas again, but me and Thomas have, is that I want to do, write up the things that we haven't done and the weird plans that we've done and where nothing real has come of it yet. He, on the other hand, really wants us to, nope, 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 let's wait for a second and not do it because then people would be disappointed if nothing happens. Both arguments are obviously true and good, but it's a difference of opinion. I just think that inspiration is something that we're kind of bad at and should get better at because we have so much to give. 
Because, and that's the main thing, we're nerds, right? Everyone in this room has probably been, well, I'm not saying probably, but let's, yeah, you have. Everyone in this room have been bullied in high school. It's a fact, probably. 90%, 99, 100. <laughs> Doesn't matter. We've all been there. We've all had that geeky moments in teenage life, and we were probably beaten up for it. We're nerds. We have specific interests that isn't shared by all. We tend to geek out really quickly. We have our fascination things, and we tend to like other nerds. And we do it so well. And the thing is, the thing that KDE, the thing that GNOME has as well, is that we're lacking developers. We're lacking nerds. We need more nerds. We need more people like us. And when everyone else talks about like, oh, I wish that Steve Jobs looking character could come in with his turtleneck and his coffee cup, lean on a table and scream at people and fire half the audience, then that's, yeah, okay, that's kind of good. But then what we get is designers. And I know I'm, I'm a designer, but what we get is the designers who aren't nerds, the people who don't get us. We should applaud what we are. We should try to get more people like us. And we have a safe way of doing it because we know how to make them geek out. We know how to make people like us feel like us about a thing because we do it so easily. We talk amongst ourselves and then suddenly when we're supposed to talk with someone outside of our core group, we sort of go, oh, remember, not too nerdy. We have to be very sort of glitzy about it. And we tend to sort of want to slap the sign on everything because we think that's what people look at, but it's not. Because what we want is the nerds. We want the massive nerds. And we do know, sorry, water. We do know how to get them because we're here. We know what attracted us. We know what attracts us. We know what we feel like we should want to do, and we know everything about ourselves. So why don't we? This is the tricky bit, right? Combine this with the Steve Jobs lust. Combine this with this wanting of something designy, something glitzy, something beautiful to sort of cover up all the nerdiness. Combine this with all those things that we sort of assume we lack and therefore we have less developers, less uh, bug fixes, less everything. We just think that somehow if we just become a little bit more designy, everything will be grand. If we get a little bit more less nerdy, if we become one of the cool kids, everything will be grand. If we... Uh, start sort of acting more like the bullies in high school, everything will be grand, but it's not. That's not how it works. So when we start developing, for example, when we start doing applications, we tend to look at what Apple does and go, oh, I wish we did that. I wish we did that thing. We look at Microsoft and their professional sort of lineup of application. Oh, I, I wish we did that. And the most probable solution that we tend to come to, sadly, because of all this, is we tend to start to copy. And the thing is, never ever copy. We tend to do this so easily. And I want to give some example. Well, actually, I don't have to because it's sort of mean. <sighs> LibreOffice. And the, 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 <laughs> that tendency to sort of go, oh my God, Microsoft Word is amazing. I want to do that. And then we try to copy wildly. And on the one hand, we do a good job. I mean, but there's still going to be carbon copies and nothing else. What we need to do is think Sorry again. Think like the nerds that we are. Think like the massive nerds like that we are. Instead of going, what would other people like, cooler people like, uh, and how can we get more cooler people to like us? So instead of making things that are made for someone else, we have to start considering ourselves as base and then try to get more nerds inspired. And the only way to do it is to do things that we like. And we are such massive nerds and we do such cool things, like stupid, weird little projects. And we have these grand ideas that we tend to beat down because, oh, it's not like Microsoft Word, so it's, there's no use to it. We have to also learn how to do this. And nothing happens. Oh! Ah! There we are. That's the thing. Sorry. Uh, and that's one of the things that we tend to miss. We tend to mellow it down because we think that's professionalism. That's not, we, we, we want to copy a little bit. We want to make the new Microsoft words, but we want to scale it down. We don't really dream big. And the thing is, we're nerds. We like big dreams. We like really stupid dreams. And we have done such great stupid dreams. Take, take one of my favorite applications, and one of the reasons I came to Linux at all is Krita. 
or Krita in Swedish. It is the best. And the reason it's the best is because it doesn't really copy. And the reason, too, it's the best is because it's a stupid idea. I mean, imagine being in that meeting. I'm sure they didn't have a meeting. I'm sure it went sort of more organic and stuff like that. But what if there was a meeting with a lot of nerds sitting around a table and one of them went, you know what? I want to beat uh, Photoshop at its own game by not being Photoshop and it's going to make people start using Linux and get us awards. That's the dumbest idea I've ever heard. Can you imagine that right here? Like, I'm going to do this, and then everything will be fine. And how are you going to do it? Well, I'm going to do something that no one else has ever done before, and it's going to be better than everything. That's the grand plan of it, and that's a horrible plan. Like, who the heck? I'm trying to scale it down with the swear words. Who the heck would, would even agree to help out? But they did, and they dreamed bigger, way bigger, way, way, way bigger. And now they are one of the things that I can show to illustrator friends, for example, and say, well, you try doing that with Photoshop and come back to me. And they always come back to you and go, how do I install this on my MacBook? And then I go, you don't, because I can't. I, I know it's possible, but I'm not good enough for it. And I don't want to be their support line guideline. <laughs> Sorry. But still, the other thing that we never, ever seem to accept which I, this is one of my golden rules. There's going to be a 10 holy rules for design uh, speed talk or lightning talk. I suggest that you go to it because this is one of the rules. And it's from Simpsons, obviously. And it's better a magnificent failure than a mediocre success. And we should consider this way more and see that as a cool thing. I know we all fa fear failure. We all, like I do it right now. It's part of the phobia thing of talking in front of people. I'm scared of doing this and this. But you do it because you hope, and, or rather you should do it because you hope that the failure would be so grand, so majestic, that people will remember it for years and years and years. You remember that uh, academy where Jens shit himself, then barfed and fell off the stage and beat up his head and Lydia had to drive him to the hospital? Yeah, that was amazing. <laughs> That's what I want. I don't want the sort of, do you remember the time that Jens sort of st stood there and talked in a monotone voice about something relevant and no one really cared about it? No one's going to remember that tomorrow. So better a failure, a massive failure, than a mediocre success. And that's, again, why we shouldn't copy, why, why we should dream big, and why we should try to geek out. Don't be scared of nerding out. Don't be scared of not copying and try to strike your own path. Because the worst case scenario, it's going to be a massive, magnificent failure. And people will maybe point and laugh. But they'll learn something. And you'll learn something. And everyone will be a little bit inspired and see what didn't work and then try something else. This is the last one. I don't have a good photo for this one because my hotel has the, most, the worst Wi-Fi ever. Uh, and that, but that's, that's actually a key point here. It's what we tend to do, again, Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs was a good designer. No one's taking that away. One of the greatness of his design was that he was a benevolent dictator. He can decide everything that ever happened. And that how, how you make a unified design. And with design, unification is the first step to make a great design. That's unification. If everything looks different, it doesn't matter how well everything looks. It has to look the same and have to behave the same. Uh, but he was most of all a great salesman. He was a wonderful salesman. He could step in and sell anything to anyone, obviously, with the new iPhone. You can sort of see it, but still. We have to, again, embrace the nerdiness. We have to look at the people who actually do stuff and not the people who talk about the stuff i.e. me. Like, ignore me and talk more with, with people like, let's see if Marco is here somewhere. There he is. Take Marco, for example. I'm sorry, Marco. <laughs> but take Marco. The first time I met him, it, I, and he sort of showed me a little bit of what he worked on. I thought he was a bit... The closest thing I could think of was a wizard. That was my actual thought. Like, oh, this guy is more or less a wizard. Like, I had this image in my head of someone from a TV show about hackers doing cool things, like doing clicky, clacky, clicky, clacky, clacky, and then sort of suddenly a house blows up and everything's awesome for some reason. <laughs> and we have, there's like everyone in this room do cool things on a daily basis. Like we do stuff that everyone not in this room, the people who are not nerds, secretly admire more than anything else in the world. 
And that's the part, like as nerds, we tend to sort of forget that cool people dig us. They want to be us. They want to be us more than we think. And it's because we do amazing stuff and we seem to be happy doing it. We're not great sales reps. We're not someone who will stand in a bar in Shanghai in a sort of smoking and pick up men or women, depending on what you prefer. And we're not going to be the cool kids. We're not going to be that. But they don't want that. They really admire us for what we do. I've talked to my husband about Marco. I've talked to friends about Marco. Uh, I've explained them in this more or less divine sort of attitude. And they go, oh, that's amazing. Like, there are people working with communication and design for, for the Swedish state, for example. That's one of their clients who thought Marco seemed like a little mix of Jesus and Jim Morrison. Maybe that might be me selling him to them, but still, that's the point. We have to applaud the creators because that's what people really want to hear. They don't want to hear us sort of pretending to be Steve Jobs. They don't want to hear us pretending to be some sort of movie star or be cool or be the kid in school that we remember from high school. They don't want that. They want the nerds. And we got that. So why are we focusing on this dream of a Steve Jobs personality coming in, ruling everything, making everything designy, and we're going to be sleek and amazing and sit in a sky bar somewhere. No one wants that, except the sky bar owner. We need to applaud the creators. We're, though, rubbish at this, which is why I'm mentioning it, but we're also kind of good. Yeah, see, I'm being a little bit nice. I'm, you know, meeting you halfway. Uh, we messed up in the past, and we've done it in a horrible way. Uh, not specifically with projects that we've done. That's a different story. This is more or less about the social thing of it. Because when we get together, and we get to be angry nerds together, then suddenly we tend to forget where we came from, what we like, what we want to do, and we bite into each other. It is like a high school prom there. It's We can murder each other on a large scale, and we've done so. There are projects and people that we all know of that have left, more or less, KD, that have sort of gone, mm, I don't care, I'm going to do something else. And we go, mm. but in fact, they've done it for a good reason. They didn't feel welcome. They didn't feel like their geeky interests were met halfway. They thought that we were sort of pushing them away. And I feel, notice the feel, because I can't prove this, so, you know, but I feel that part of this is that we tend to look for the Steve Jobs in the crowd, and he's not there. So we notice, like, oh, that's a geek, and he's doing geeky things, but they're not exactly the same geeky things that I like, so I get angry at him or her. If the, it would be a Steve Jobs character standing in a crowd going, blah, 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 design, 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 we tend to be way more forgiving for some strange reason. Again, we have to sort of consider the fact that we're nerds, we like nerds, we do nerdy stuff, and people like us doing nerdy stuff. Instead of going, wow, that's nerdy, and I don't really agree, so boo, you know, push you off. And we do that a lot, sadly, and we've done that a lot. There are good examples, of course, where we've sort of been welcoming, We've been friendly. We've accepted people for being massive nerds and perhaps not being the most, let's say, someone that you wouldn't bring to the Nobel dinner. You know, like most of us, we're not fitting in in that sort of society. And that's fine. We, we, we can be really accepting and we can be really cool about stuff and we can do these really cool projects, like Krita, for example. So, wow, that messed up. This is Google, by the way, so don't feel bad about your bugs. Uh, okay. How to get more good things and less bad things is sort of the goal of this. I think that beyond the nerdiness, obviously embracing the nerdiness, these are some pointers that I wanted to squeeze in. Uh, do we have, by the way, do we have any questions from Reddit? We, we do have questions. You haven't told me anything. Could yeah. I interrupt you? Sure you can. Please, please, interrupt, interrupt. I'm very sorry. So the first question we have, which I think is by the most amazing username, Trippy Unicorn. Trippy Unicorn. Trippy Unicorn, whomever you are, thank you. Trippy Unicorn asks, who's the most organized person in KDE? Wow. Uh, well, actually, currently, I think it's the, I, I don't want to say this because she's here. I, I'm not saying it because she's here, but, but 
Lydia and the EV is extremely organized. <laughs> But the main problem there lies in the fact that it's easy to be organized when you're four people. It's one hell of a problem trying to be organized in a bag of cats trying to do their tax return together. <laughs> it's not really the easy, like it's, we, we can say, oh, Lydia's really organized and go Lydia, you'll sort up Kitty entirely. And then we put Lydia in a bag full of angry cats and ask her to sort of fix their tax return together with them. It's not gonna work like that. So, but yes, the EV I'd say is the most organized. Whether that is a good or a bad thing? <laughs> I mean, like, it's good, yes, it is absolutely good. Without them, it would be a mess. It would be a horrible mess. But at the same time, uh, we also have to consider the fact that we are the ones not listening to them. So, you know, we should perhaps see what they want to say and try to cooperate a little bit more with them at times. Is there any other question? Or that cover yeah. it? Um, more questions. No, go, go for it, go for it. The next question is by Riddle, and he asks, why would a designer use a boring slide deck, deck slide deck for a talk on design dynamics? Oh, I can tell you that directly. I picked this for a very good reason. Okay, this is the reason. This is a good reason. I, I, this is actually about design, and it's, it is a good point. The reason why you use dark gray and gray, light gray and white is that it's the second best way to, it's the second best style for visibility. The best one would be if I replace the white text with bright yellow and the other one with a little bit more faded yellow. I'm doing this for you. Okay? <laughs> oh, <laughs> wonderful. Thank you. How dare you also. That's a side note. <laughs> So, is there any other question that we there want to There is one last question. Okay, go for it, go for it, go for it. Can you imagine a stack exchange for UI designers? <laughs> uh, I can, uh, but it would be, I mean, if it's a social, okay, so the problem why I call myself illustrator before designer is because I like illustrators. Illustrators are cool and friendly to each other. We tend to be supportive of each other's work. We tend to be very much like, if you want to show your taste in something, you say, oh, I like that, that illustrator and that illustrator and that illustrator. With designers, the opposite tend to be true. I'm not saying all designers, but a certain class of designer tend to be, I hate that. That's rubbish. You suck. That tends to be the way they show how much style they have in something. And that's why I think a stack exchange for UI designers will end in World War III. <laughs> I, I don't know. I wouldn't be, yes. That was your question, okay. So what I meant by this is. Oh, oh, we have mics. Yeah, so what I meant is um, you said that uh, you cannot uh, go to the, to the programmers and tell, you, and tell them, do it this way, yeah. because they will leave. But um, yeah, I suck at UI design oh. badly. <laughs> well, uh, and I've given up on it. Uh, I work on backends now. Um, and I think it would be nice uh, to have it the other way around. So, you know, yeah. you don't come to people and tell them what to do, but they come to you and, and ask, tell me what to do. And, yeah. and ask, uh, look at my UI. Why does it suck so bad? What did I do wrong? <laughs> what can I do better? Yeah, that is a good point. I, I think actually that it should be more of programmers and developers coming to uh, designers going, you there, do uh, design for me, because th that would be way better than it is currently. I mean, it's tricky right now because everything is very much up in the air, but I agree, there should be some way of us doing that. There's one, and that the only one that we have currently is more or less a social thing, because I mean, I don't know you that well and you don't know me. I think we met once here, I've seen you. Or maybe I'm going, I don't have glasses on, never mind. <laughs> no, no, no. I have never seen you before in my life. But, you, and that sort of means that you can't go up to me and go, hey, 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 Jens, I want you to do this for me. That, that's not going to happen. But you should be able to. Like if you're in KDE, you should obviously be able to just go, Jens, Jens, come on, chop, chop, do, you know, clicky clacky or joy, joy. Do it now. Some of here I know personally, and they're more than happy to do that. And I, they also know that I'm, I love that. I love that because I'm not gonna, it, it, it's a social thing as well because I can't go, into, go to you and go, your UI is horrible. <laughs> like, what did you do? Why are you here? That's, that's a horrible thing to say to someone. So it's way better that you sort of 
go to me, but then we're sort of both sitting on each of our chairs and sort of... So you need social go-betweens, really. You need some kind of social go-betweens. Yeah, or that just... sit down and we can say, hey, I'm a developer, you're a developer. I think your UI could be better. Maybe you should go to Jens. You know, that... that yeah, well, it should, it should be strict. build though. that kind of bridges... No, but, but, but it's, yeah, that's true on one hand. On the other, we could sort of skip the bridge entirely and sort of be more outward with it. Well, I'm telling all of you, not right now, that it's okay to poke me. I'll say no if I don't have time. But, you know, it's wonderful to poke me. And I know a lot of, a lot of other designers that I can always sort of shuffle the work onwards to. Uh, Sebas, for example, uh, is a of someone who sort of skip ahead of the, the bridge because he recently went to me before I went to Stockholm and went away, obviously, so it's not, not, not much work had been done. Sorry, Sebas. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> don't beat me up. But he knows that he can just go and grab me and say, Jens, you got to do this, and I will. And I hope that at some point we'll get where everyone, all developers feel that I get to go and talk to a designer as if he's my best friend and we've known each other forever. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, oh, you're picking a fight, are you? <laughs> Meet you outside. Interesting aside on that. Um, yesterday, we, we I talked with the people who... Um, this is about the multi-screen configuration uh, user interface, which I uh, oh. just put in the capable hands of the visual design group uh, for a uh, redesign. Mm. And yesterday, I talked to the original developers with it and said, yeah, but, you know, I actually want to redo uh, this stuff of the uh, UI and I may have used the word rewrite. And he said, yeah, you do that. I've done it four times and um, you can do a fifth time, no problem at all. Uh, so what, what happens more often than not, if you go to someone and you say, your UI sucks, um, is that this person? Yeah, you're right. Yeah, but that's still, okay, call me a bleeding heart, but I don't want to insult the man. No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, I think my it's computer's It's a completely frozen. wrong way to go about it. It's, so, let's improve it. Can I just restart my computer and hope for the best? You started a new session. I started a new session. Switch session. Ooh. ooh. <laughs> Nothing. Oh, my God. I start a new session, that's a weird thing. <laughs> Who made this UI? Oh, shut up. Uh, no one talks about that anymore. Oh, is he? Is he? Oh, I'll take him down. Uh, okay, so how to get, to refocus, how to get more thing, good things and less bad things. And it's, well, this is a list, so we're gonna just read along, shall we? Except that people are people who won't be at our level of excitement yet. This is actually, okay, so this is one of the things that I get really hyped up about, is our tendency to hope that new people are going to be at our level of excitement. They're going to be sort of like, yeah, I'm going to do bug reports, and that's not going to happen. I mean, we don't go, yeah, I'm going to do bug reports. Th that's not what we are, but we have sort of been excited enough to feel like, I can do this. I can do bug reports, I can do bug trashing, I can check things, it's going to be fine. Uh, we can't accept, expect people to be that level of excitement yet. Uh, focus on inspiring people to work instead of complaining or ordering. Again, I've been talking about this the entire thing. Uh, you're checking your watch, by the way. How long do we have? We're fine. Five minutes until the, the Ooh, questions. Okay. Uh, and then focus on inspiring people to work instead of complaining and ordering. That gives itself. Talk more about the people who make. I mentioned that before. Talk more about, let's, let's talk more about Marco, for example, if we want to. Uh, I, I, I do. Uh, or talk more about other people who make cool things and do it in a way that sort of inspires others, like us. Like, don't try to inspire someone who doesn't know anything or it has no interest in nerdy stuff because they're not going to be interested anyway. Allow yourself to geek out when you talk about things. Allow yourself to be a little bit technical, but be friendly about it still. There's a, a sort of gray area which we always miss. We always tend to be either extremely glitzy and you, uh, sort of PR-like, or we tend to be very focused on the extremely technical, and both of them can be bad, and one of them can be less bad. I don't, <laughs> let's move along. Uh, criticism is 90% compliments. 
I've spelled that wrong, uh, I think. Criticism means 90% compliments. Uh, and this is uh, a thing that I've, this goes together with the social bit, social bit, right? It's that we, when we criticize, we tend to forget that a criticism, a good criticism, is 90% being nice. Like if I wanna criticize your t-shirt, for example, I would start, what a, you know, you look happy today, and then blah, 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 and then said, perhaps you should switch t-shirts because, <laughs> wow. And, and, and the reason is, it's the, it's the friendly sandwich of, of insults, more or less. It's that sort of, you want the person, the, the reason for that is that uh, criticism, which doesn't, isn't met with compliments as well, it's embedded in compliments. We tend to forget that criticism do hurt that your UI sucks, for example. It, you might think on a logical plane that, oh yeah, okay, it does suck, but you know, you'll help me now and you're just saying the truth and blah, 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 blah. That's not, not how people usually work. <laughs> it's a weird thing to say to a room of nerds. That's not how people work, damn it. No, it's <laughs> like we're aliens. No, it's the fact that we tend to get a little bit hurt. And if I tell you 10 times that your UI sucks, you'll never try to do UI again. And that's you know, convenient in some ways for me because I get to do <laughs> UI stuff. But on the other hand, it's still bad because that means you'll never try it. And we want people to try stuff. Like I said, better a magnificent failure than a mediocre success. Make your UI so bad that people will write about it. Like, oh, <laughs> Jesus, I got a heartburn from watching that UI. Uh, inspired through action and creation instead of words. This is sort of self-explanatory, we all know that, is that me saying this nonsense up here is not gonna make you people do something different. What, what will inspire though, if I do something that is so majestically messed up, or, or sort of vomit, you know, like I said, vomit, fall on the stage, la la la, that might inspire you. The action is a way better way to inspire someone else. That sounds like I'm trying to inspire you to get a panic attack, I'm not. But what I'm saying is that you get inspired by good UI. You watch a cool UI that say I've done, because I only do cool UI, uh, and you say, that, oh, that's, that's amazing. And then I, you and me start talking about doing our new UI uh, for the thing that you made, and we start talking about like what could you do. Oh, and I show you this thing, and I show you that thing, and we start talking, then suddenly work happens. Me saying, just saying, do better UI, it's not gonna work, it's not gonna cut it, it's not gonna make people better automatically. But we wanna inspire through action and creation instead of words. And you guys who are programmers, you can do this way better than me. Because you do cool things, and other people see the cool things and say, I wanna do this cool thing, and perhaps they're rubbish at it, but that's another thing. Then we have the accept, dissent, applaud it, but learn how to, to deal with it further. I'm gonna try to hammer through these points fairly quick, I notice. Uh, and that is, uh, when, uh, when anyone in this crowd goes, I hate this, or at least say, I don't like this, we have to accept that in a better way because we haven't been good at it. We tend to drive people away. We tend to fight in these insane battles about nonsense, to be quite frank. From the outside, it's often one of those, why don't they just go, nah, you're okay and then go away, because that's what you're arguing often. It's very, not just technical, but it's technical combined with pride, and we tend to get really angry and spiky about dissent, but people don't agree with us, and we have to sort of applaud it. We have to applaud dissent and make sure that people can do their own stuff without ruining it for everyone else. And we also have to notice how to deal with it properly, how to include people who wants to do different things, so they can test doing their thing in KDE instead of being kicked out of KDE and trying it on their own. They have to test it in KDE. We have to go like, well, it's not for everyone, but uh, that's awesome, I'll help out, and can we evolve it somewhere else? Because that way, if it goes great, and we notice it's better than we, what we have, then we can include them to what we have. If it's horrible, that person will probably go, eh, it wasn't that bad, and we still work together. Because currently we're sort of shoving people out at times when we feel they're a little bit too different. Uh, spot the difference between an angry debate and a divisive fist fight. It should be easy. I don't know why I have to write that down or why I wrote it down, to be quite honest. But it's, it's, it's a difference. Like, I don't like his t-shirt, he doesn't like my shirt, that's a debate, maybe. And then when he goes, I don't like your face, that's when we know it's, a, it's a, like, when a conversation is technical on our mailing list, we know, oh, it's still fine. It's when people start to repeat themselves, we've all seen it, seen it the beginning of the flame war. We can spot it a mile away, 
in text, I noticed. In social situation, we're not as good, but you know, let's not talk about that. We need to be better at, at, at this. We need to be better at stepping in and going, okay, now we have to sort of, this is a timeout thing. Try to, let's leave it for a week and come back and talk about it later. We need to be comfortable enough to do this as a group, as everyone. Like, and we have to listen. When someone goes to you, for example, and goes, no, 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 no. We have to step away for a week. We'll be, come back to it because you're way too angry. The natural reaction is going, no, I'm not, and I hate you, because that's what we are. We, we don't like to be told that we're angry and we don't get to do what we want because we're KDE. And we, I can show you the in. There we are. We're KDE. <laughs> Yay, uh, and this is what we do when people tell us what to do. We don't like it, that's what everyone does. The thing is, we have to learn to sort of grow up about this specific thing. We have to learn to grow up to understand when someone tells us something in a public way, they are actually trying to be nice. They're not saying you're a sh horrible person. They're not saying I'm a horrible person. They're saying, look, I get it, you're a great person, but right now we're, this is heading into a minefield. And we don't do this at all. We have to be better off. it. That's part of the social glue that's needed to have this sort of social Hercules thing that we got going, which is lovely, but it's also sort of collapsing a little bit at times. Uh, collaboration is key with whomever. And this is one of those things that we're also not that good at. We tend to ignore the fact that there's a lot of people who want to collaborate with us. There's a, a brilliant example. There was a, a, a design bureau that I worked for years back, who, uh, whom I, I met him in the street, and he said, oh, you know programmers. Yeah, yeah, I know a lot of programmers. They're lovely people, I have said. Um, that's as far as you know, at least. And he mentioned that, like, we're doing this thing with, uh, they're called strawberry pies. You mean Raspberry Pis? Yeah. And there's gonna, there's gonna send sort of information on a thing. And I went like, okay, that's, that's cool. But, you know, what are you talking about? And he sort of mumbled about doing some sort of Wi Fi router thing. And he'd love to work with us. I mean, that's the, the problem is, of course, they don't have cash now, which is the typical thing. They don't have cash now. But the thing is that all these collaborative projects are out there. They might sound stupid to us because the person presenting it is a, not a thicko, but not a nerd. You know, like eat raspberry, strawberry pies and, and everything. It's, they don't get it. Uh, or they don't get what they're doing at all. But we have to consider collaboration more. We have to be better at it. We have to be better to collaborate with anyone. If there's a company come along saying, I want to do this, we need to look at the company as an ally and then see at what they're trying to do as a problem. Like, we can't go, you're a company. I don't like you. I'm never going to work with you ever because you're a company. We have to look at what do you really want? What do we get out of it? And stuff like that. But we have to consider collaboration a uh, more important key. And then lastly, never go to bed angry, which is something that helped me, my parents, my grandparents, etc. Many others, parents and themselves in any relationship. And this actually makes sense to us because we tend to do this. We tend to be the bad couple. The couple that fight through the night and then sort of sleep back to back and sort of mutter swear words to each other or just jab each other in the ribs if we can. We tend to hold a grudge way too long. We tend to sort of go, you know, they're ass hats or sorry, they're poo heads. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying, okay? I'm from Sweden, I can't stop swearing. They're poo heads. <laughs> And, and we sort of look at Gnome and like, mm, horrible people. And in fact, they're lovely, like, but we tend to hold a grudge. Like, let, let's, let's be angry at them for a relevant reason instead of sort of just being angry at them all the time. We're really good at being angry all the time and keeping it going. And final Reddit check. Yeah. There are more comments and questions. Okay. Um, the first one. Hello, Jens. Great talk. Thank From you. the wiki to learn guys near the bottom of the room. Woo! <laughs> Woo! Thank, thank you. Yeah, you haven't booed enough. <laughs> Criticism. <laughs> and all we do ask, have you finished the logo yet? Yeah, I have. But you rejected it. Where are you, by the way? It's weird. <laughs> talking I have. You, there you are. I have. You rejected it. Where, I can't see. 
Oh, there you are. I was looking up there. I have, you rejected it. It was too Romanian, you said. And I realized I know nothing about Romania. Let's talk about it this evening, perhaps. We can sketch it out. It's going to be fine. It's going to be cool. Next question. <laughs> so I sort of skipped ahead like I haven't done it. <laughs> uh, the next one is again by Trippy Unicorn. And oh. they ask, is Neon ready for work? You're asking the designer if Neon is ready for mm. work. I'm going to say, well, the salesman, the answer is this. Of course it's ready for work. That's just a question of how professional you are. <laughs> <laughs> like, the, the, nerdy, the nerdy answer is, yeah, <laughs> maybe. There are, there are bugs, there are problems, there are stuff, etc. But I don't want to be the guy who answered that because I don't want to be in any way, and I want to be responsible in some ways for it. Like I want to be one of the people you can fling crap at if it, something doesn't work. But I, want, I don't want to be the person who takes credit for it because I haven't done much on it. It should, again, be the developers. And they've done a massive, again, I'm, I'm sliding into salesman voice here, but they've done a massive job to improve something that was shaky at first and then got better and better and better. But yes, I think so. I use it daily. This is my arch machine, by the way. So my, my, my desktop computer is stable. <laughs> Harold would kick, beat me up if I said anything else. Yeah, yeah it's stable, rock steady. Next, quickly. <laughs> uh, Linux Lower asks, angry nerds tend to not be very nice and sometimes hurt people. What do you or the audience propose? I would like to look at, okay, so, uh, okay, so this is actually a really relevant question. Uh, angry nerds, N nerd, we tend to be a little bit, uh, the correct term is on the autism spectra. There's a lot of people on the autism spectra in our midst. That's just a fact. I don't know why that is, why they find us a safer and nicer place to be in. I mean, I know I, I have a lot of like the agoraphobia. I like this place. I mean, the reason I'm up here even talking is because she asked me, an agoraphobic, to do a keynote. What, a, it, what a wonderful person. Uh, Alex, for example, had borrowed me his Fitbit so we can measure my heartbeat. The, it, people, like all these people have given me, so, oh, it's gonna be fine, it's gonna be fine. And if you vomit, I'll film it. <laughs> like, the, the point is, we're a little bit weird, but we are welcoming. And one of the things that we have to remember with people who tend to be a little bit too spiky is, and uh, if they have on, are on the autism spectra, we have to consider who they are first and really think, does this pe person really try to make me angry? Or is it just a sort of a bit of a faux pas? We, try, we have to meet them halfway. Most of the, pe most of the angry nerds I met uh, that have tried to hurt me has been, it's been like being attacked by a kitten. Like, I'm a, I'm a gay middle-aged man. I've been insulted way worse <laughs> by other gay guys. We're good at it. Uh, but, but, so the point is that, that but, when, when they, some angry nerds, when they just want to tell you something, like I didn't like the UI you made, they tend to be very sort of, I'm going to be very logical and clear about this. And then they say something that's really hurtful and you realize, and you have to realize that he's not, or she's not trying to be mean. She's, he or she is trying to just be logical and clear and you have to accept this. But yeah, there's, there's, a, five people in here that I've wanted to strangle at one time or another until someone else went along. He's just trying to be nice. Don't worry about it. Oh, okay. Uh, there's one specific who's in Korea right now, uh, Ike, who's a lovely human being, but he is, well, I'm a Swedish nerd. He's a German nerd and cultural clashes happen. And one of the things we started out when we started talking, one of the first time we started talking, I told him, I never want to talk to you ever again. You are literally the worst. And he said, I don't want to work with you ever again. Goodbye. That was our, more or less our first conversation. And then we sort of patched it up because we realized we were arguing, arguing on assumptions 
that we made about the other person and what he was trying to say. I was making assumptions about Eike and sort of weaving in subcontext into what he was saying, into this massively melodramatic insult. And he was considering, like, talking to me and thinking I was the most ungrateful person in the world because I, I sort of, I was flippant about his suggestions. He tried to help and I saw it as insults. And then he saw me being, mm, okay, mm, yeah, 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 just trying to get away as me being the most insulting person ever. But we managed to patch it up. And that's what we got to do. We sort of have to meet halfway. We have to see what the person are, who the person is, and how to sort of interact in the best way possible. And if there's someone who's truly mean to you, this is what you should have been told in school. If there's someone truly mean to you, stop talking to them. Walk away. If they don't get that you're walking away because you don't like them, then they're a bit thick and need help from other friends. But you need to walk away and just drop it. But I don't think there's that many. Like there are a few that might be like that, but I think most of the time we're just overreacting to assumptions. Any other questions? We have five minutes. One more comment and one more question. Um, cool. First one from Ivan, who says, I'm glad you're a part of our little world. Oh. <laughs> and then, Ivan uh, is adorable, by the way. He's somewhere here. I can't see him and it's the light. Oh, where is he? Th there he is. <laughs> he is adorable. He's. Can I just comment in on that, the angry nerd thing again? Even, this is going to sound a little bit cruel, even, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> even it's a really sort of like, yeah, I'm a, sort of, <laughs> wow, why am I doing this? I'm a very sort of, sort of logical kind of person, and he wants to sort of do the logical thing, and other people might, I know some people who read his comments on my Google Plus, for example, like, who is this poop head? <laughs> I'm, I'm keeping to it. Who is this idiot? Like, like, what's wrong with this person? And I go, no, 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 no. It's Ivan. <laughs> he's, he's the greatest. He's the first, he's also the first KDE developer I've ever met, uh, ever, on a street in Barcelona. But the thing is, like, I know Ivan because we're friends. And Ivan hopefully knows me that he can, there's a way that we can talk to each other that, that I'm sure that he knows that he's not hurting me. And I know that he's not trying to. So it's sort of like one of those, we all have weird personalities, and I'm sure you, most of you find me sort of loud and obnoxious, but no, oh, that's the end. He's just trying to be friendly. And we get by on it. Sorry, next, next thing. And even it's adorable again. Uh, Albert asks, what do you do if it's bad time and you are angry? Uh, what? When it's bad time and you are angry. What? <laughs> 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 That's, that's the answer, more or less, yeah. Sebas knows. Uh, we have a code of conduct here, so I can't comment. <laughs> that's, <laughs> stress relief. That's the correct answer. No, but I'm, I, I, I never get angry, except when I'm really angry and then just... Never mind, let's, let's leave it with that. Stress relief. Uh, is there any other questions from this lovely group of people? Yes? I love that you said that we should fail. And yeah. just a small comment in there. Once we were in a bar, like four KD developers, talking and uh, talking about our most favorite topic, the vision and the mission and all that. Mm -hmm. And we actually came out with a vision that KD should be a safe place to fail. Yeah. That should be part of us. And it's nice to come. And many of us learn almost everything we, we know here. And you can fail, and that's nice because you're yeah. surrounded with good people, and they're just going to hug you whenever you do something bad. And carry yeah. on, and that's really nice. And but with this, there is a content part sometimes. Is that although we are nerds, and I agree with that, sometimes it's not even about looking for the cool kids. Sometimes it's is about competing between nerds, right? Yeah. So you have the other cool project in some other. GitHub or whatever, that they are really cool, they are doing yeah. the latest, and they are not failing, while all you can see is failure. And that sometimes can bring you down, demotivate, and then you demotivate others, and then you become a depressing community. So, <laughs> and wow! Uh, <laughs> well, this, this negative, negativity is easy to spread, right? So how... Absolutely. How, how do, do we you... keep it up? Like, how do we avoid the negativity? Yeah, thoughts on, on that. I, I think that... that First of all, I think it's uh, not as plausible that we're going to fail miserably all the time. But I do think that we... Um, I don't... We've seen... Uh, yeah, 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 but I, I, I don't... 
like, there are a lot of things that we've dealt with badly, and we've dealt with it by not talking about it. We've dealt with it by not applauding that person and going, that was a good try. We, we sort of focus on the bad things, I feel. When it comes to if, our own projects, we tend to be more critical than we should. We tend to not applaud that person. Again, it's a social thing more than anything else. And I think that if you fail, if I fail miserably right now, let's, okay, so in this example more than anything, I have a panic attack, I vomit, I fall off the stage, you drive me to the hospital. My reaction would be horrible embarrassment when I woke up, but I still know that I'd sort of be welcome in. And I'd get jabs and pokes and people laughing, and then I'd get suggestions on how to deal with it the next time. Where, for example, suggest, <laughs> dumb suggestions. And, and, and we can keep that up. That's the thing. Like, I, uh, if I, I don't know. The thing is, I don't know of any grand failures that we've done. I know some, but not all. And I'd love to know more about them just to talk more about them. And now, apparently, I'm running out of time really quickly. Yes, I'm running out of time. One more question. Sorry, Alex, we'll talk about it more. Because we really should. That's... So do you think KD40 was something good? I was... This is the best <laughs> answer. I wasn't in Linux then, suckers. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to even answer. <laughs> but, but in support of my friends, yes. Uh, uh, absolutely. Like, if someone, if someone from the outside said, uh, do you think KDE, like, no, that's wrong. If someone from the outside said in a very sort of, do you really think KDE 4 was a good idea? I'd say yes. I'd do a blood oath on that thing. I'd go, yeah, 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 it was the best idea ever. Because we kind of have to do that for each other as well. Like, we have to support each other in some sort of weird way. I know it's not logical and not clear and it's not... Even, it doesn't really make sense either, but we have to be there for each other. If, if for example, someone criticized Quinn, and you're standing next to me, I would go, Quinn is the best, it has no bugs, there's no problem, we're already running on Wayland, and we can eject ourselves into space with it. I'm ready to lie, sheen, and steal for each other. And we should, we shouldn't feel like we, we can't support each other. We need more backslaps, we need more people going, you are, you are the bomb, or whatever kids say nowadays, I just realized. <laughs> I am almost 40, I, I don't know how to say these things. And now we have to wrap it up. And I want to thank you all for being here. I want to thank Lydia for being ready to drive me to a hospital. And can I just, just for the record, since we're still filming, can I just have everyone scream boo at me while I walk out on the stage, okay? In three, two, one. <laughs>